Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. Today I'm going to be talking about the uh, FN Browning 1900, uh, M1900. There's a whole bunch of different ways these guns are referred to. What it was was a early auto loading design in 32 automatic. It was designed by John Moses Browning and licensed to Fabrique National in France. Um, so what what you'll see is sometimes you see them referred to as Browning 1900s or FN 1900s. Um, they they were one of the first really functional, practical auto loading pistols. Um, they were pretty popular. I know Teddy Roosevelt had one. He um, talked up quite a bit, and um, often you'll see them referred to as the gun that was used to start World War One. That's incorrect. They were actually that was actually a different gun. It was a FN 1910 design. Um, but like I said, this this is a an interesting uh, early auto loading design. Um, this is a uh, nickeled out one my dad got for cheap because it is missing the magazine. It also has a busted safety. There should be a, a little leaf spring in the uh, back strap here that, that holds this safety captive. So the safety is both a loose and you can actually even pull it out. So um, it's one of those project things. Once I find a spring they're kind of hard to track down. But once I find one, I would like to go in and fix it and then order a magazine. Um, but an interesting thing about these guns is when I pull the action back here, i got to make sure the safety is in the right spot. The barrel is actually on the bottom. So the top, where you traditionally think would be the barrel, is where the recoil spring is. And the barrel is where the recoil spring traditionally is. So very low bore axis, which is a buzzword we talk about nowadays. This was a very early pistol with a very low bore axis. Um, and uh, also interesting, there's a cocked indicator, which is this little um, tab up on the sight here. So when you pull the trigger, which, uh, like I said, I've checked, it's, it's not loaded, I don't have a magazine or ammo for it. When you pull the trigger, that little tab flips up. Um, so now you know that it is not cocked. When you cock it, that flips down, you can actually use the sight. When when it's not cocked, it blocks the sight. So it gives you an indicator that uh, the gun is or is not cocked. Um, it's got a little few and sir, safe, fire, uh, in French, indication on the uh, safety. Um, a pretty interesting, just straight blowback design. Uh, I imagine it would be very similar to a Browning uh, 1903 or not Browning, uh, well, it's a Browning design, a Colt 1903, um, I imagine it would be about the same, maybe a little bit softer shooting because it's a little bit heavier, but uh, definitely interesting. If you take the screws out here, the slide kind of just flies off the front when you let the uh, slide loose, and that's how you take it apart. But uh, I have heard that uh, these guns function best when fired with not 32 automatic, but with European spec 765 I think by like 18 I think is the, the caliber designation as I understand it the, the 32 ACP rounds have a slightly different rim design um, which is a little bit out of spec with what these guns were originally designed for so those 765 still retain that original rim design and I don't know if the rim is actually a different size or the actual the indent slightly above the rim where the uh, extractor grabs the case. I think that that's what's a little bit different. So I have heard from people that have fired these that you're better off seeking out European spec 765 ammo than 32. But like I said, I've never really fired this um, just because it needs a couple parts. I, I don't like firing a gun where the safety spring is missing, even though it should be very safe to, to shoot. You, you're just not going to use the safety. I, I, it still makes me a little bit nervous. So one day when I actually find one of those safeties, uh, at a parts deal or something, I'll fix it up. But definitely an interesting gun as far as a great uh, look at where auto-loading pistols started from. I mean, it's just straight blowback, so there's not a whole lot to it. But you can see where Browning was really one of the guys that uh, revolutionized pistol design. Without Browning, we'd still have things like a Luger or a bore chart where there's just all kinds of extra stuff going on and all kinds of wacky solutions to try and Rube Goldberg the problem of having a functional pistol. So definitely really cool. 
If you see one, I wouldn't pay a whole lot for it because, you know, it's not it's not a super great design, but definitely a cool curio. I think they run somewhere between, you know, three and five hundred bucks or so for a functional one. Obviously, this one with its busted pieces and whatnot is not worth near as much, but definitely a neat curio. For Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris saying have a rootin' tootin' drunken shootin' day. Thanks for watching.